Hey up, how are you doing? Welcome back to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. My name's Dave K. I hope you're all well and everything's all right where you are. And it's sun shining, which is absolutely amazing. A little bit of sunshine goes a long way and it makes you feel really, really good. But in the workshop behind me today, you can see a new proof reactor. And guess what? It's an analog bike. There's not one e-bike on our stand today. This is a new proof reactor and it's in for a full service. So I've been waiting to do this uh, video for ages because I'm going to uh, focus on a full bearing change on this particular bike. Now I've had loads and loads of comments in the past saying, please tell me what tools you use to do a bearing change? Where do I get them from? How do I do it? So I'm going to try and do a little bit more of an in-depth video, more on individual parts on this bike in terms of a bearing change. How we know it needs a bearing change and how we go about looking at different parts. Now, as you know, each bike is different in terms of how you go about and take these bearings out. But having said, said that, the process for removing bearings for a bearing change on an analog bike is fairly generic across the range. Now, each individual bearing probably needs to come out a little bit of different than the other one, but that's what I'm going to cover off today. But first of all, let's look at the tools that we potentially could need to work on this bike. Let's crack on. Now, as you can see, we do have a lot of bearing tools. Now, the reason why we, and this isn't, this isn't them all, by the way, there's more uh, than this. But the reason why we have so many tools is because we have to do so many bearing changes on different types of bikes. And each one might need a different bearing tool than the other. So this is a little bit of an overview, really, on what, uh, what bearing tools that we use. Now, there's some special ones in amongst them. This one here, for example. Now, this one here is a, a barrel remo bearing removal tool for a specialised FSR. Now, this one does the back back-to-back uh, -to -back bearings on the articulate side, right at the rear end. This one's specific for them them bearings. So how this works basically is uh, this unscrews here and it, when it unscrews it's got like a long pointy uh, piece at the end which spreads this particular section apart at the ends to expand. Now this actually goes inside the bearing and this don't forget this is for a rear specialized FSR. The bearing goes like that okay and this bearing puller is designed so it just nips up at the back there we go so it just nips up at the back of the bearing but it doesn't interfere with the other bearing that's at the back of it so you can pull one side out at a time now this is an amazing tool uh, and it's so cleverly done because the actual chamfer is perfect for this sort of bearing. Now, so what we do is we basically imagine this bearing's in the back of the articulate side. And then what we do is well, once it's actually on there, we tighten this up. Are we in focus? I'm hoping we are. We tighten this up and it expands the end to, to, uh, to make the, uh, the, a nice tight fit. And then we get this this particular sleeve which has been made we put that over there that goes up against the frame we put the washer on and then we put a nut on the end and we turn the nut put a little bit of grease on there we turn the nut and what will happen is when the nut turns this shaft pulls back through and it pulls the bearing out of the housing now this shell's made out of aluminium, so it's quite soft. So it's, this is actually gonna not damage the frame in any way, but it's certainly gonna pull the bearing out. So that's what we use for FSR specialized stuff. 
It's a great little tool. These sort of bearing pullers here, which is a blind bearing puller, we use a lot of these for the kind of uh, bottom bracket stuff. Um, uh, we use them for rocker links and stuff like that. Uh, so we use that for quite a lot of stuff. This one here is very, very similar. This one's made by Wheels Manufacturing. Uh, and it works in a similar way, a blind bearing puller. You put that in the... You put that in the frame, tighten it up so it spreads out at the bottom and then you tap the other side from the other side so you can actually knock that bearing out. And that's how these work. And there's loads of different types in here as you can see uh, for different size bearings. Similar to that, but this is a slide puller. This one you just actually use the other end, use like a, a, a light hammer uh, and a... And a, and a a drift on the other side. These ones here, these are the prob these are the ones that we probably use the most. Um, each particular one is designed for a different size bearing. We've got a set of them in here as well. They're very very similar. So these are the bearing tools that we generally use amongst others. Uh, we do have a hydraulic press as well, which we use for motors, such as that one there. As you can see it, that one's in for a, a, a full overall and a full rebuild. Uh, so these are as general uh, bearing pulling tools. Now before we, we go about taking all these bearings out and replacing them, it's interesting to see and feel if there's any particular movement in these particular pivots. And it's easy to do, but if you can't feel any movement in these pivots, that doesn't mean that they don't need replacing because they do. Once a year, you replace these bearings in your bike. That's a must. At least once a year for the bottom ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to bob the bike on the floor and I'll come back. So I've taken the bike out of the stand now, as you can see, it's on the floor. So what we're going to do basically is hold the seat post with his left hand and we're going to put his right hand over the back wheel and we're going to rock this back wheel backwards and forwards, side to side to actually see if you can feel any particular play or movement and I can feel some uh, movement in that back wheel now you can easily get this confused with rear hub movement so the way you find out or the way you actually eliminate certain stuff is you look at your pivots first and you put your fingers against the frame and the part that you're actually trying to look at and you wobble it like I, like I showed you before and you feel with your fingers if there's any movement there. I'll show you what I mean. So for movement, what I'm gonna do is, like I said before, I'm gonna get my fingers and I'm gonna put one thumb against the top and one finger round the other side. So each thumb and finger is touching both parts of the bike at the same time. So I can feel the frame and also can feel this rear triangle as well. Okay, so now I'd, I'd normally do this with my left hand and do it with my right, but I'm, I'm kind of opposite ways here. So I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, when I can get my hands through. Okay, and I'm gonna rock it backwards and forwards. Yeah, and there's certainly a little bit of movement there. I can feel it. What I'll do is I'll try and get in close and so see if you can actually see it yourself, but you'll need to look pretty carefully probably. Are you ready? And you can hear a little bit of a creak as well. So that tells us that this bike's a year old, don't forget that these two here need replacing. If you let it go much longer, you could potentially damage the pin. You could potentially damage the, uh, the rear triangle or the main frame. Um, damage is, well, you'll, you'll cause loads of damage if you leave it too long. So we know that they need doing. Everything else doesn't feel too bad. But there's definitely movement there, you can see it. There's no play in the back wheel because if I put my hand against here, 
as you can see on the other side and I wobble it that way I'm kind of eliminating this I'm taking this out of what I'm looking for and now I can feel if there's any movement in the back hub and there's none there so I know for sure that this needs doing for a start I can't feel anything in these top links so they're actually feeling good condition so the first thing that I'm going to concentrate on is getting this pin here out of uh, this rear bottom pivot and we'll replace the bearings in this in this particular section first so I've taken the crank set out the back wheels out and the chains just out of the way which gives us full access to this area here um, now as you can see there's a pin that runs through all the way to the other side there's no bolt on the other side so what we need to do is take an 8mm allen key and just turn that and loosen it off but we need to be careful while we're doing this because there's a chance that this pin could actually be seized on these bearings in here now if we start to undo this and it's actually loose to begin with so that's not a good idea is it so um, it's loose which helps us a lot uh, and this pin is going to come out nice and easy okay so we undo it pull it out very carefully okay so we don't need to worry about anywhere on this particular pin it's in really really good condition which is probably what I'd expect to be honest uh, and it will loose which is a bit of a bonus it makes it easier for us so yeah so that's out now that means we can actually just lift this out of the way just so we can actually see these bearings here and there'll be some little washers as well on there so you can see those little washers let me see if I can okay so these little washers will cover the bearings which are on the inside but what we need to do basically in order to get access to take these out then we need to kind of slacken this hose off a little bit um, create a little bit of space so we can actually maneuver things about so I'll unclip these uh, which will allow us to actually roll it, roll it back a little bit and now that we've loosened these hoses and brake cables we'll just roll this back a little bit further so we can get access that's it there you go okay you see that now you need to be careful not to lose these little washers really really important they keep all the muck and rubbish out so there should be one either side and you can see there the bearings so I can put my finger in and it won't turn uh, which explains why we've got all that movement there because they're so damaged and they need replacing if you wanted to and this is what we do most at time is we take all this rear triangle off take all the, pivot, all the pivots out so we can actually replace them all at the same time but for the purpose of the video, and I'm just showing you how you can actually do one section at a time, put that one back and do another section. Um, and it's the best way to show you how to do it. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how we're going to get these bearings out. Uh, now, they're not fastened in in any, any particular way, but you need to check whether there's no circlips or anything just holding them in. Two ways we can actually go ahead and get these out. We can actually get a small drift and we can use it to actually gently push the bearing out from this side we've got a little bit of a drift okay and this is one way we can do it there's a sleeve inside here like an aluminium sleeve so we could actually get the back of the drift against the back of the bearing and we could press it out that way so what I think we'll do for the purpose of the video I'll press the, that side out using the drift and if you're very careful there's nothing wrong with doing it this way okay you do the top and the bottom first apply a little, apply a little bit of pressure and you can feel the bearing will start to gently come out There you go now <coughs> don't be alarmed because there's nothing wrong with doing it that way it's a good way of removing a bearing so that's the way that we'd remove 
that side and the sleeve I can pull out with my finger. There's the sleeve, we give off obviously a really good clean before we put all this back and we put some new bearings in. So we'll put there and then what we'll use is we'll use the blind bearing puller to actually get this side out just to show you an example of different ways you can get them out. So let me get the bearing puller. So we'll use this slide hammer bearing puller for this particular bearing on this side. And so what we do is unscrew that slightly, manipulate it in so it just drops behind the bearing tighten this up just till it starts to tighten okay and then we get a slide hammer screw it in the end and we just very very gently pull it until it stops on the end of the slide hammer Okay, and that is a way of getting your bearing out using a slide hammer. Personally, I prefer to use a drift. It just seems less aggressive. Uh, it's, you can actually control the drift a lot more than you can a, a, can, a slide, a can a slide hammer. And it takes quite a lot of force to actually get that bearing out of there. Um, and so I'd rather use a drift. It's a little bit more, you know, you can, you can feel it with your fingers rather than just whacking it out with a drift. But that's one way of doing it. So we've got them out, how we're going to get them back in and what we're going to use to do that. Well, a couple of options. First of all, we can use like a stainless steel bearing press, uh, a hand one if you like. Now this is exactly the same size as the bearing that we're going to push in. Now it's important that if you're going to do that, then you need to make sure that the bearing that you're going to put in is the same size as your press and what you can do is basically put your bearings up against the frame after you've obviously cleaned them and lubed them get your hand bearing press against the bearing and you can just gently tap it in it takes a little bit of practice because you've got to go in square and it's really important the other way of doing it is to use a proper bearing press which is probably our preferred method. So this little bad boy here, what we basically do is put one driver end on this side, one bearing press on that side, which is exactly the same size as the bearing. We put one bearing up against that, it just sits in there nice and neat. And then what we do basically is we put that over the frame and if I carefully wind that in you can actually see that the bearing is actually starting to go in the frame really nice and square which is exactly how we want it to be and we just keep on winding that and we just feel a little bit of resistance and then we're done There we are, that's it, done. And we do exactly the same for the other side. If you notice I've put this little piece of paper in there just to stop that rear triangle mark in the frame. And then what I'm going to do is just before that starts to engage the thread on the other side I'm going to go around the other side and apply some Loctite on that thread and then I'm going to tighten it up and then torque it off to whatever torque the new proof specifies and that essentially is that done. It needs a bit of a clean because obviously my grubby hands and for those of you who complain that I should wear gloves you're right but I can't wear gloves doing this sort of work. I can't feel anything through my fingers. So, um, so basically that's that section done. Obviously it's to tighten up and talk up, but essentially we're done there. Now that leads us on to this link here under the back of the shock. 
Uh, now these vary so much from bike to bike, so it's worth taking a photograph of as it, as it is before you actually take it to bits. And then you can refer to that when you put it back together. But essentially, in most cases, the shock needs to come out first. So we'll take that out now, and then that'll free this section up here. So it's always interesting to reveal, once you've actually got this shock off, you can actually see how it goes in at the bottom. Now this particular shock has two bearings, one either side. Don't know whether you can actually see that. There's actually some little dust covers. If I take one of them off, you can actually see see that bearing there on the either side and there's a little pin in the middle now on this little pin there's two shoulders so if you were to get like a slight drift and just bash it that way a little bit you'll find that that bearing on the other side will come out and then you'll be able to get to the other side of the bearing you only need a light little bit of persuasion because it'll easily come out now that leaves us obviously with this section here and again this has what we call a flip chip in it which means that you can actually change this backwards and forwards to get more travel or less travel, depending on where you want to ride your bike. Fairly straightforward to come out. All we need basically is a 6mm Allen key. Make sure it's nicely in its slot. Okay, now we just need to be careful. Just take that out of there, that's it. Do the same on the other side. Opposite threads. If you noticed, okay, so it's important that we make sure these go back in the same way around. So just make sure you put them right, in the right order. Left and right. Okay, now what we need to do now is push these pins from the outside in so we can actually get a hold of them. Okay, that's one on one side. And that's one on the other side okay and then that frees the actual seat stays off and we've got two washers here okay and that leaves us with this side again you need to be careful with threads okay now we need to do this side now this pin goes all the way through so we need a ratchet on the other side okay and we just undo that very very slowly the pin I can see is in really really good condition comes off of there okay so this section now you can see is completely away from the bike let me take some washers on inside of there so we have to be careful not to lose them Again, take photographs if you need to, so you know where things go. Now that little section there, we call, might call that a dog bone or something like that we call it. There's four bearings in there. One either side, one either side, one either side. But also if you look carefully in there, you can if you can see if you look carefully in there there's a circlip so we need to make sure we get that circlip out before we try and press them out now the way that we press these out are again interesting and i'll show you how that's done so the way we take these bearings out we use this little tool here now this is a great tool and we use it all the time for all different sizes of bearings but the idea basically is there is a little a little plug in there that is exactly the same size as our bearing and what we basically do is we take the bolt put it through the cup take that at the other end put it through there Screw it in so it tightens up and that is creating like a void inside somewhere where the bearing to actually go to once it's come out. So we get us <coughs> 8mm Allen key 
and I'm trying to do this awkwardly by, by hand. Okay, and we hold the bottom with a little tool that just screws in there to keep it steady. Okay, and we just turn it and we can feel that the bearing, I'm going to move my bottle of water, that the bearing, you can actually hear it coming through. <laughs> Getting everything all over the floor. Um, and you can hear it coming through. Okay. Once it comes through, you'll feel the resistance go completely there. Okay. So if I undo that now, I'm hoping we're still in focus. There's us bearing in the other side. And this is completely unmarked. So as you can see, it's a fantastic tool. Uh, and we have one for just about every size bearing. Now the way that we put the new bearing in, basically, is we take as new bearing. After we've cleaned all that up, we use the same tool, but in a different way. So this piece here is the same size as the bearing. And then we use that through there, the bearing through there, and then this on the other side. We just gradually, now I won't push it home because it needs a good clean, but it just gives you an idea of how this thing works. It's a really, really clever tool, okay? So now, again, with the Allen key, we can tighten that up and it'll push the bearing all the way to the stop. And we do that procedure for that one, that one, and that one. But we aren't to forget to take these uh, clips out and put them back when we're done. So that gives you a basic idea of how them be that bearing tool works. It's fairly, it's fairly straightforward. They're not cheap. But if you, if you do doing your own mechanics on your own bike, then that is the sort of tool that you're going to need. We're all back together now at the bottom end of the shock. All new bearings replaced. Just as I described in the video when I changed the bearing, uh, that's the same procedure for each one of those. And that is now back as it was before. Which leaves us with this little bad boy here. Now these can be a little bit of a pain because more often than not there's two bearings in there and they're back to back. Um, so we'll have a look and we'll see where we are. We'll just take this bolt out and we'll have a look and take the other one out uh, and then we'll be able to see where we're going. With these we'll just separate them very very slowly. Again there's two washers, one either side. Yeah, so we'll take them off, put them to one side, and that's revealed, as we suspected, two bearings, side to side. Don't know whether you can see them in there, one either side, butting up against each other. There's a circle on outside, so we need to take that out before we start uh, pushing and pulling. There's one on the other side as well. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I could potentially use something like a blind bearing puller to, to slide hammer it out. But I think in this particular case, because they're so small, I'm going to get use a, a bearing puller that we use for the uh, suspension linkages near the, uh, the shock. So we'll see what happens. I'll take the, take the split links out. Okay, so we'll use these tools that we used on the uh, the other part and we'll see how we get on and hopefully it should pull them clear if we feel any resistance at all then we'll stop Right, here we go. Oh, 
they're coming out easier those both at the same time beautiful now generally that is not normally the case and we're really fortunate that that's actually happened now on some articulate uh, parts like this you usually find in the middle of each bearing there's a uh, like a lip now <coughs> I know that there's not one on here and I could tell there wasn't one on here and that's what enabled me to pull them all the way through both at the same time but if there were a lip and a little washer in the middle then you would have to use a blind bearing puller to pull each one out either side so what I'll do is I'll just give it a clean and we'll press two more bearings in there uh, and then we'll put the circlips back. I don't think there's going to be any need for me to film this other one at the other side because obviously you've got the drift with this one. So we'll get some new bearings in there and I can see them just sliding in and it will stop when it gets to that pin, that circlip. There we are. So what I'll do is I'll repeat that process with the other side, put it all back together, and then we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back in a minute. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, a little bit of a long one, uh, but I needed it to be long because I needed to show you different parts of the suspension linkages, how they come apart, and how we put the new bearings in. There's no reason at all why you cannot do that yourself at home. You need a decent workshop, some decent tools, and you should be able to accomplish that yourself. If not, obviously bring it into us and we'll sort it for you, or a decent mechanic will do that for you. On that note, I'd like to finish off by telling you about this new website. We've just launched a brand new website. If you want to take a look, it's www.cycle-fast.com. .co.uk please take a look and toodle pip